Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Diana Romanovska. I am a certified family law specialist practicing in the Bay Area, California. Today, I would like to... I love this show that just came out. It was in Canada first and now it's in the US. Uh, the first two seasons came out and uh, the next one is gonna... Well, the episode is coming coming out as well. So the first episode of Family Law, I have some comments about. So the first scene. Custody, end the story. That is ridiculous and you know it. And what else is ridiculous? You having sex with my best friend. Okay, okay. I understand emotions are running high. But we agreed that if I was to arbitrate for you, you needed to put Craig first. Which is why I want full custody. Craig has a lot of special needs. He does not. You just projected your own insecurities onto him. He is so much more relaxed when he's with me. Right, Craigie? Right. Right, Craig? Come on. Craig. 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 you have full custody of a dog? Well, not so long ago, dog was not even considered for custody purposes. Dog is property as we would consider community property, separate property during the divorce process, when it was purchased before marriage and separate property during the marriage, community property. But can we ask for custody of a dog? Now, yes. I actually have a video. Um, I will link it up uh, above about custody. So, uh, yeah, I had a case where we had to go through mediation when dog was in dispute, who is going to take care, and it was as if it was a child. We had a mediator, court-appointed mediator, we had a court hearing, and the judge would look at this issue as if it is considering a child. So we look at what's in the best interest of the dog. Uh, what is the best timeshare? What is the best parenting plan? Who is going to take the dog uh, to the veterinarian? Who is doing what? And same thing. So it's, um, it's pretty amazing how law has changed and uh, the series uh, reflected this change pretty well. Mr. Bridger, Harry Svensson, I, I want to apologize for the behavior of our new um, junior associate. I'm the one who should apologize. I shouldn't have taken off like that. The news was overwhelming. I didn't think children were in the cars, so I know to have a daughter. If she's willing, I'd like to meet her. I'm sure that can be arranged. Isn't that right, Abigail? Absolutely. Harry. Okay, in this scene, uh, this man found out that he is a father after many, many years. So the woman posted on Craigslist that she, <laughs> that she wants to be pregnant and that man will have no financial liability. Well, her Craigslist ad is technically, you know, not really valid agreement if the baby now uh, needs child support because baby didn't sign this agreement. So child support is, so the man who is now the father is on the hook for child support. So if she went to a sperm donor um, clinic and that would be anonymous. It would be she would sign all kinds of contracts that she cannot seek child support, and it would be all tight in terms of um, in terms of uh, legal rights uh, of a child against the father. In this case, this father is definitely going to uh, have to pay child support. So when he had uh, responded to this. Uh, he should have probably consulted a lawyer before having an intercourse with her. Yes, it's a, it's an, it's an interesting issue. Um, so do not respond to ads on Craigslist and in pregnant women if you don't want to pay child support. 
Lesson learned. Morning. Hi. This was your plan all along, wasn't it? Find me, lure me in, make me pay. That's not true. Take your seat, Mr. Brazier. You shouldn't be talking to us without your lawyer present. Well, my lawyer will be here very soon. I found a good one. In fact, strange coincidence, he has the same last name as you. Is this going to be a problem? Do you know him? You could say that. He's my husband. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Bridger hired me. You to get back at me. Abigail, sit down. Holy moly. So, think about this. Wife already has a client. And surprise, surprise, her husband comes into courthouse to the hearing as opposing counsel. Is it even possible? Yes, but it's against ethics. It's against rule 1.7, California rule of ethical conduct. And this rule 1.7, listen to this, approved by Supreme Court effective November 1st, 2018 states, even when a significant risk requiring a lawyer to comply with paragraph B is not present, attorney will be required to provide written disclosure so he was supposed to provide his client when he saw the firm he saw who his associate was his wife written disclosure to his client and that so the lawyer has or knows that another lawyer in the lawyer's firm has legal business financial professional personal relationship with responsibility to a party or witness in the same matter or two the lawyer knows or reasonably should have known that another lawyer is a spouse parent child sibling or lawyer of course we don't know in this movie if he did that perhaps he did and the client said you are the best i'm signing everything i don't care that the other lawyer on the other side is your wife but technically if it didn't happen then her husband would have violated rules of ethics and it could be disciplined he could be disbarred he could lose his license so no go sperm donor wanted must be healthy educated and fit will pay $100 donor will have no financial or parental obligations <laughs> madam justice my colleague and his client are simply trying to cash in on my client's newfound wealth. Council rests. Mark Bridger, when did you become a father? Two weeks ago. No, you became a father the moment Rosie was born. Objection. He had no idea he was a father. Overruled. When you and Ms. Kierkevich had sexual intercourse, you knew she wanted to get pregnant. The ad said no financial obligations. It also said no parental obligations. Yet here you are, spending all this time with your daughter. And Jeanette isn't stopping you. In fact, she understands it's a good thing for her daughter to have a relationship with her father. And I'm grateful for that. And yet your gratitude doesn't extend to your pocketbook. Don't you think Jeanette deserves something for raising your child after all these years? You think you can just waltz in now and have everything be on your terms? Objection, Your Honor. My colleague is reducing this very complex issue to nothing more than money. Mr. Bianchi, of course it's about money. It's a child support application. Proceed. There is a huge financial disparity between the mother and the father in this case. And even if we set that aside, being a parent comes with responsibilities. Mr. Bridger, I know you want a place in your daughter's life and I commend you for that. I was estranged from my father for over 30 years. He was a lousy parent, an emotionally stunted and unavailable human being. An objection. But he still managed to send my mom a check every month. My colleague is bringing her own emotional baggage into this. Sustained. Really, Ms. Bianchi? Stick to the facts. Fine, the facts. 
Mark Bridger became a dad 13 years ago, so therefore he owes my client 13 years of child support. Please, you can only go back three years from the date the support was requested. This is a well-known principle of family law, which my colleague would be aware of if she were, in fact, a family lawyer. I think we can all agree that these are completely unique circumstances, Your Honor. Based on Mark Bridger's financial records and the child support guidelines, he would owe approximately $3,200 per month for a total of $499,200. Okay, so can someone go for child support retroactive to the date of birth? It seems very excessive. So to my knowledge, and I haven't done much research on other cases of appeal, but in 12 years of my experience, the court can go to the date of the petition for divorce was filed. That's as far back as possible. So if someone doesn't ask for child support, that means they don't want the money. But in this case, it's a very, very specific case where she didn't know who the father was. So the court has to balance all pro and cons, whether his financial, him paying it, um, or the child's need after the fact. I mean, the child is already doing well. Usually when someone needs child support, they go to child support services and they say, this is what I need. And the child support goes back either to the date of filing for child support or to the date of filing the petition. But going back so far, um, I haven't seen that happen in my career. So... If you want me to do a research on this topic, I will. But I thought it was a very interesting issue that I never heard before. I've had time to review everything, and I've reached my decision. Permission to address the court? Proceed. Our clients have reached a compromise. We've agreed on the terms of a consent order, subject to your approval. Mr. Bridger has agreed to pay $50,000 in retroactive child support, payable on terms, as well as pay child support from now on. And Ms. Gierkovich has agreed to a parenting plan so that my client and his daughter can continue to foster their relationship. We'll attach it to the consent order. Both parties are happy with this arrangement? Well, it sounds like a reasonable compromise. I'll make the order. Adjourned. So... They reached an agreement outside of court in order to preserve the relationship between fa daughter and father. And so this lawyer, she settled, she helped to settle this case instead of $499,000 to down to $50,000. The court could, given the series and that she found this case, that the court has the authority to give child support retroactive to the date of birth, the court could have said no to this agreement because it would be not in the best interest of a child. But it seems in this case, the court didn't want to challenge this agreement for the reasons why they reached it to preserve this relationship between a daughter and father. And it seems to meet her needs. And it's very, very common for before the court makes a decision for parties to reach an agreement to preserve peace in the family. And they did it. The fact that she didn't make money for the firm is, is a separate topic. Where's Craig? We came up with a temporary shared custody agreement. Yeah. I kind of miss him. He was the only living creature in this place who didn't think I was... Uh... What were the words again? Oh, yeah. Colossal bitch. We could have made this firm well over $100,000. Instead, you made us the equivalent of a tuna sandwich. Okay, so instead of 500000 close to five hundred, she made $50,000. And the agreement was that the firm will get 33% contingency. Can the firm get contingency on a child support? <sighs> so aside from ethical issues to take from child support, contingency is possible in family law only 
after divorce is final. So meaning either the status of marital termination, the marital status has been terminated or the divorce is completely final because the public policy doesn't want lawyers to be interested and have a stake in people getting divorced. So imagine if I had an agreement, so the more money you get, the more I get, and then they try to reconcile. I was like, how dare you reconcile? I'm losing my money as a lawyer. So that doesn't work. Um, same thing in criminal court. So because lawyers are supposed to be conjured to the court and to the, I mean, just ethically appropriate. So hourly rate is or flat fee rate is the only way to go for family law up until divorce is final. So that's uh, that's why she she didn't do so well for the company but for the for the firm, but helped the child father relationship. So I love this. If you want me to do more of the series uh, commenting on, um, let me know. Like if you liked it, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Bye.